So, now that we know our directions a little bit, let's talk about the geography of the theater a little bit. Just like the directions, we've got some names that we call things in the theater. A lot of them come from sailing, because a lot of old technicians back in the day, again, used to be out of work sailors, so they would, because they would know how to do knots, they would know how to fly things in the air. So a lot of things like battens, like lines, these things are ancient, ancient sailing terminology. Not to say that if you're a really good sailor, you're automatically going to be good at theater, but it gives you sort of a stepping start. Anyway, we're going to start with some stuff that does not come from sailing, just to be confusing. So, this theater that we're standing in, Dawson's Theater, is what's called proscenium theater. Um, because the scene, the scenium, is in front of the audience. It is pro the audience, pro proscenium theater. Uh, and one of the features of a proscenium theater is this great big arch right here. It goes right across the front of the stage. This is called the proscenium arch. And it serves to divide the stuff that's happening on stage from the audience. It forms like a kind of a, like a fourth wall that we've knocked down. And uh, that, was, that was a big thing in the style of theater for a while, was that you'd have the scene on stage, and you'd have three walls on stage, and then you'd have knocked down the fourth wall, and you were looking into this room. And so then, when the action on stage, later on in, in history, when the action on stage would start interacting with the audience, when we started having direct address and things like that, we called that breaking of the fourth wall, because we'd step through it. Anyway, uh, so this arch is a feature of proscenium theaters. Um, a lot of the times in older theaters, these, this proscenium arch will be covered in really fancy gilded plaster to make it look a bit like a frame around the action. Uh, the thought was to try and uh, make what was happening on stage look like an oil painting and to have this really fancy frame all the way around it. Like, ooh, I'm watching a moving portrait. Isn't that fancy? Uh, we don't do theater like that anymore. We do theater a little differently. Uh, and a gilded arch like that is more distracting than helpful. It doesn't really add much to the story anymore. So we don't do it in a lot of the newer theaters, like this one, like Centaur, like some of the newer ones. But if you go to an older theater, like uh, McGill's Moist Hall, or like they do it to a degree in the Monument National, there's a couple of theaters around the city and definitely around the world where they have this really big, fancy plaster arch. I bet you, if you think about like going to see an opera, you're thinking about one of those arches. So. That's the proscenium arch. It has this plaster thing on the front. Ours doesn't. But it's important to know about that because of this line. So there are two kind of lines that we use to define the space in the air. And this line that goes about the same line as the proscenium arch is called the plaster line because everything in front of that line had to be covered in plaster so the audience, because the audience was going to see it and it was going to look ugly if it didn't have fancy gold stuff on it. Everything behind that could be black and crusty, and that's fine. So if it's upstage of the plaster line, the audience could see it. Um, it's useful for us to know about this plaster line for two reasons. One, uh, it's the line that we use to define how far upstage and downstage things are. It's sort of the zero points of measurements. So if we're going to put things on stage, we're going to measure them based on how far upstage or downstage they are of that plaster line. You know, we'd say that the table is eight foot six upstage of the plaster line, or two foot six downstage of it. It's also really important to know because in, in a lot of theaters, in a lot, a lot of proscenium theaters, there is a fire curtain that comes down in case of an emergency, which is a fireproof curtain that separates the stage from the audience, um, and it'll fall pretty much right along that plaster line. So it's really important to know where that is, so that you know where that curtain is going to come down, and so that you can not have a table across it, or, you know. So, plaster line runs stage left, stage right, across the front of the stage, right around where the proscenium arches, divides the stage, and lets us measure things upstage and downstage. Okay, what about stage left and stage right? Well, the second line we're going to talk about is the center line. So, if you were to take the theater and run it through a gigantic bandsaw, so you could just cut the building right in half, right along the middle, it would be cut in half right along the center line. And in this theater, 
we are lucky enough to have a seam in the flooring right about where that center line is. Not exactly, but pretty close. Close enough for government work. Um, <laughs> so this line, this center line, is, is it runs, we, you can't usually see it, but in this case you can, it's very helpful. And it, it help us, helps us tell, uh, tell us where we've put things stage left and stage right. Um, it indicates center stage, it indicates the midpoint of the stage. Uh, if you're folding curtains, you're going to fold it to here probably, or you're going to put the center line there and put them up. So if I were to place that same table I was talking about earlier over here, let's say, then I could measure it out and say, this table is eight feet stage right of center and 12 feet upstage of the plaster line. And you pick a point and you'd say that's where that point is. And then the masterful part of that is that if you wanted to say, move where you were having rehearsals to the stage, if you were like, I need to move where I've put that in rehearsal, or I need to remember where I put that in rehearsal so we can put it on stage in the same place, you can do that because you have those measurements. So that's the center line, that's the plaster line, that's the proscenium arch. At the extreme stage left and stage right sides, we have what are called the wings. When you're waiting in the wings, you're waiting on the side of the stage for your cues to come in. So on our side, in our theater, the wings have these staircases in them and they have lights and they have things. Um, and they are, uh, in a proscenium theater quite often, they are divided from the stage by these big old curtains here. So these big old curtains here, these guys, these are called legs. Uh, legs, like pant legs. They're sort of narrow, sort of tall, long, you know, like like trouser legs. So you've got one on either side of the stage. You've got legs here and legs here. And they serve to hide what's happening in the wings from the audience on stage. So they can't see people getting ready for their cues. They can't see people picking up their props and getting ready and waiting in the wings because the legs are there to block off that, that view so that it's sort of invisible and it's part of the magic. Um, they're made of fairly thick velvet, um, called velour. Um, and the reason for that is to try and dampen some of the sound. Um, you might be able to hear, as I'm talking, that there's kind, of a, there's kind of a reverb in the room. And without those curtains, there would be a lot more reverb. Like, it would be almost impossible to understand what I was saying, because there would be so much bounce from my voice. So the curtains tend to sort of deaden the room a little bit, which makes it easier to understand people. It helps with the acoustics. So it blocks the view of the wings, it deadens the sound, and if there's any light off to the side, like running lights, like those fluorescent lights over there, like these blue lights over here, the curtains, the legs, help to block that light so that they don't, that doesn't spray onto the stage. So it also blocks light. That's why they're opaque curtains as well. So that's what legs do. Over the top of the stage, you might have seen when we were looking at the overhead before, there are these big long curtains. These are called borders. So the big long curtains do the same things we were talking about before. They hide light, they uh, block sound from bouncing all over the place, and they also hide anything that's over the overstay, hide anything that's over the over your head. So all of these lights that are up there, um, all of the piping that's up there, if there were any set pieces that were hanging up there, you could hide them behind the, behind the borders and they would, it would mask all of that overhead stuff from the audience. So they're positioned in such a way that the lights can still shine and hit the stage where they're supposed to be, but that you can hide the actual physical lights from the audience. And again, it gives that kind of magical feel to things. You know, there's light coming from somewhere where we can't see it. It hides the structure of the theater uh, so that all that we see, it focuses our attention on what's happening on stage. So that's the masking, legs, borders. Um, there's another piece of mask here, right at the front, and a special curtain. This guy here, right, right, right up against the proscenium arch. And that's the main curtain. Some people call it the grand drape if they're feeling fancy. Uh, we don't. 
Uh, and that is uh, when you think about going to see a show at the theater and the curtain draws to hide what's, what's going on, that's the main curtain. That's what's going on there. Um, we don't necessarily use that effect all the time in theater now because we do theater differently. It's not the same kind of structure sometimes, but we do sometimes use it for certain things. It's helpful to be able to draw the curtain and do a scene change behind and then open it and suddenly it's magically changed. Um, but what it's really useful for is this theater doesn't just get used for theater. Um, sometimes there are presentations that happen here, sometimes there are conferences that happen, and um, we can do that with a set on stage if we just draw the main curtain in front of the set and then it is hidden and it's just this sort of nice backdrop for people to sit at the table and talk about things. But where do they sit? What's that part? So, if you look at the downstage edge, in front of the proscenium arch, there's this sort of curvy bit. This bit over here. So sticking out in front of the proscenium arch is this sort of sticky outy bit, and we call that the apron. That sticks, that's a part of the stage that extends into the audience, downstage of the proscenium arch, from, you know, and that is used for exactly what I was just talking about. If you want to do things in front of the curtain, if you want to have a scene that's happening if the main curtain is drawn, you can do a little scene in front, or it brings the audience closer to the action, it brings the action to the audience so that they feel like they're more part of it. Like I was saying before, you know, we used to do theater in a way that felt like a big moving portrait, and we don't do that anymore. Now what we do is we try and bring the audience into it. So that's what the, the apron sticks out of the audience so that you have a closer rapport with the audience. You have a way, place where you can go closer to people to give your monologue or your speech, and it's a bit, bit more of a connection. If it sticks out even further into the audience, if it sticks out so far that you've got audience on three sides, we call that a thrust. But we'll talk more about that next semester. So, we've just finished talking about the masking, and we just talked about the apron, which is downstage. So that gives you a sense of, like, if you're standing on stage, you have a sense of what you're looking at. Legs, borders, main curtain, top stage, downstage, all of that. What about up here? Well, so quite often we have a curtain across the back of this wall, so we don't have to look at the, the wall itself with all of the outlets and ductwork and everything on it. And that's a backdrop. Um, we have a, a, a black curtain that draws across, so it hides everything, and it just looks like a black curtain. It looks like nothing when you're sitting in the audience. Uh, and that's a really nice way of sort of dressing up the theater so that we can hide some of the structure. And again, in a proscenium theater, the idea is we generally want to see what's happening on stage, and we don't want to see the action around the stage. We don't want to see the structure. We don't want to see the lights. We don't want to see anything but what's happening on stage. We're trying to preserve that sort of um, illusion. Right? The suspension of disbelief. So, we've got, a, we've got a black backdrop we can put across the back. What if I don't want a black backdrop? Up in that corner, there is a white curtain that is sort of folded up and bundled in that corner. Uh, and that can draw all the way across the back of the stage to make a white backdrop. And you think, well, why do I want a white backdrop? Well, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you might if you're doing something weird, but quite what you can do with that, that is called a cyclorama. It is essentially a great big white screen, and we can get a bunch of lights like this one that shine a light specifically sort of up that can illuminate that big screen in a, very, a variety of different colors. So you could have a blue backdrop or a red backdrop, or a green backdrop, and it, it kind of gives the impression of looking like a great big sky, which is really useful if you're doing, like, a, a show that happens out in prairies where there's great big sky, or if you're doing something grand scale that wants to have big emotional color changes. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to do something weird like a great big blood red sky if you're doing, like, the Scottish play. So that's a really neat effect that you can do. You see a lot in, um, I don't know if, if you guys, I don't know if you youngsters are uh, old enough to remember the old iPod ads where you had a black, a big color screen and then a black silhouette of somebody dancing with their iPod on. I certainly remember it because I'm getting old. But um, 
but that's the effect you get. You can, if you have just the cyclorama lit up, you can have a big field of color and actors in front of it in silhouette, which is a really cool effect. It can be really, really neat. Um, so it can do a lot of things. It can also be used as a projection screen if that's what you're looking for, because it reflects the projections really well. We do also have a projection screen at the front of the stage. Um, since we're here, so that's the backdrop, that's the cyclorama. It takes a bit of time to install the cyclorama, so it's not something we can do on a whim, but it's, uh, we have it permanently hung, so it can be drawn across relatively easily. It takes a bit of, it, it has to be stretched to look properly, so it takes, it looks, so it takes a bit of work. Um, sometimes there's also what's called a scrim. Um, which is a semi-transparent curtain that goes in front of the psych. Uh, scrims are really neat because what they can do, they're sort of a, they're sort of a loose mesh. Some people call them a gauze, like a, like a medical gauze. Um, it's, like a, it's like a curtain that's woven like a screen door. So it's got this sort of mesh, and when you shine light on it from the front, it looks opaque. But when you shine light behind it, the things that are behind it are lit up, and you can see them. So it works like a two-way mirror. Uh, and that's really handy if you're using it with a psych, because that means you can light up the psych, and you can see it through this curtain. But when you turn off the psych, you can have this black backdrop in front of it, and you can make the psych kind of disappear. You don't have to deal with this white background if you don't want to use it all the time. So backdrop, psych, scrim. We, uh, we don't have the scrim in right now, because because it's so loosely woven and because it has to be used so tight, it's very fragile, so we keep it bundled up and stored when we're not using it, so it's up in the air right now. The last thing I want to point out, since we're back here, is this box. Um, this is what's called a moon box. Uh, and what it is, essentially, is it is a wooden box. It's got a bunch of light bulbs inside of it and a big circle cut in the front with a piece of fabric stretched over the front. Um, and what it is used for is you can stick that behind the psych, you can roll it out to a certain point, and when you turn on the moon box, it creates this warm circle of light that looks almost exactly like the moon. And you can bring it up its various intensities, and you can you know, move it across to where you want it to be. And when it's not there, the moon disappears. And if you want to do like a night sky, you can do like a beautiful kind of... Uh, sapphire blue on the psych with a little bit of pale blue at the bottom and then you can move the moon out the middle and turn that on at a, at a fairly high level and you can put like a star globo against it. I'm a lighting designer, I love this shit. Anyway, so that's the moon box. It is a very old school way of doing the moon. Uh, nowadays we'd have, uh, we might just put in a light to shine on on the on the screen to make make it look like the moon, but this is a very classic way, it is a very effective way, and it's a very nice way of doing it. And since we have it, we might as well use it. You won't, you, we all, you know, what I'm saying is, you won't run into a moon box in every theater, but some of them have them, and they're really cool. I told it said there was a projection screen. Um, Dawson's, so the projection screen we have here runs in front of our main curtain, right about here, I think so that we can have the main curtain closed, and then we can bring down a screen that covers almost the whole stage so that we can project like a video or uh, yeah, mostly a video. You guys, you could do a slideshow or a presentation if you were doing the conference. So you can do, you can have stuff on stage, you can close the curtains, you can bring down the, the screen, show your video, set up whatever's going on back here, and then fly out the, the screen. See? Fly out, because it's got, yeah, 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 now you're learning. So the thing about the screen is that it takes about a billion years to fly in and out. It's about, it's, it's, I'm exaggerating, but it's like a full minute to come down to, to, to level and then back out is, it's very, very slow. So we don't use it during shows very often. Also, like if we're gonna use projections in a show, and we sometimes do, uh, we generally want it to be more sort of part of the scene, so we might use the back wall, or we might use a set piece, or we might use the cyclorama as our projection screen. But if we wanted to use the screen, the actual given projection screen, you could do that. It's there. Where I'm standing right now, this is not a piece of curtains. Where I'm standing right now, center stage, there are these big old things on the floor. 
And these are traps. It's a trap. Well, so what these are is because because this is a proscenium theater, and because this is, we do a lot of different kinds of theater, and because we have this ability to have things under the stage, we can have panels in the floor that can lift out, and then people can disappear into the floor if they wanted to. We have special inserts we can put into the floor that have a trap door in them, and people can climb down a ladder into the floor, which is a really cool effect. Uh, and I'll show you where that ladder goes afterwards. But anyway, these, we have three average size, well, so that's like four by, four foot by three foot plugs, roughly, kind of, sort of, that are in the floor, and they are perfectly safe to walk on. You can jump on them, you can run a genie lift over them, you can do whatever, they're part of the floor. Um, and if we want to have, so, so they're not going to open on you, is what I'm saying. We call them traps, but they're not traps until we actually set them, and even then they're not really traps to catch you. Right? It's a, it's a misnomer. Uh, so if we wanted to put a trap door in the stage, we would lift out this plug with like two or three people because they're super heavy. Uh, and we have a built platform that sinks into the stage with a trap door in it that we could open up. And then there's a ladder that we'd set and we could disappear into the floor. So those are the traps. The last thing I'm going to show you here is the elevator. So you might have seen this elevator in the green room when we were talking about it before. This is where it ends up on stage. So this is, this is the same elevator shaft. This is the same elevator that's in the green room. You can bring things from the green room onto the stage using this elevator. You can bring things from the shops down in the basement up to the stage using this elevator. So if you're geographically inclined and you have a sense of like spatial awareness, you would, you would realize that the green room is right under our feet, right here, because that's the back wall, right? That's the elevator, it goes down there. That staircase in the back leads down to the green room, and if you keep following it down, you end up in the basement where the shops are. So when I say you gotta be, care you gotta be quiet in the green room, it's because people are walking on the ceiling, and because you are underneath their feet, and if you make a lot of noise, we're gonna hear you through the stage. You shouldn't be making that much noise, but just to let you know why. So, there's that staircase that goes down to the green room. In the stage left wings, we have a staircase that goes down to the dressing rooms. The dressing rooms are also under the stage. They are sort of here. So, just to sort of orient yourselves. Um, and once you've grasped all that, We'll take a look at some other stuff.